I wasn't moved. I wasn't moved by the Saints defense. I understand that they were highly effective and all of that stuff, but I wasn't moved. Yes, you got eight sacks against Ron Matt Ryan, but that offensive line is atrocious. Julio Jones had a hamstring injury. He was in and out all game long. He had two receptions. Some dude named Cage or Gage, whatever the hell his name was, he was targeted 12 times. Brian Hill was running the ball more than Todd Gurley. You got no running attack. It ranks 24th in the league. You only rushed the ball 12 times because you know you didn't have a running attack. It was very predictable. I mean, Matt Brent Ryan was just mincemeat. I mean, I mean, they were just salivating at the mouth. They knew exactly what he was going to do, and they knew that God's Julio Jones, with him not being there, couldn't get open. So, I, I mean, the Saints deserve props and credit. Don't get me wrong, but when I say that I wasn't moved, I mean I was more moved by what I saw from Taysom Hill because let me tell you something right now. This brother can do something that Drew Brees can't do, and that's run with that damn football. In today's day and age, if you are a quarterback with wheels and you watch Lamar Jackson with his suspect throwing ability, at least last year and the year before, run the football so effectively all the way to league MVP honors, if you can run with the football, it's something that needs to be utilized. And sure enough, that's what Taysom Hill did. Ran for two touchdowns, ran for 51 yards, and oh, by the way, when he, when he threw the football, other than that floater, that Hail Murray to Emmanuel Sanders for 44 yards, I mean, he was pretty much throwing the football effectively throughout the day, completed 78% of his passes. I didn't expect that from him. I hadn't seen him throw the football, and he looked pretty damn good throwing the football, this is, which is why I didn't blame Sean Payton for retweeting Roddy White, the former wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons, who was talking smack all week long about what the Falcons were going to do to this dude having his first NFL start in Taysom Hill. Well, he put all of that to bed. He handled his business, and I give credit where credit is due to walk in as the successor to Drew Brees, at least for the moment. And to look the way that he did, throwing the football, but then to add running the football to his arsenal, which is something Drew Brees could never do, it made the Saints look every bit as formidable as we're accustomed to seeing them look, at least this season. And that is what impressed me. It's who he was coming in after, which was Drew Brees. It was how effective he threw the football. It was adding the running dimension to his arsenal and putting that in play for that offense. And, of course, I, I mean, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint that with all of that being said, it made perfect sense because guess what? Jameis Winston would not have run the football like that. So having, having Taysom Hill in there playing the way that he played, I got to stand down oh. and give this young brother, this 30-year-old brother, props for showing up, showing up in the lineup and playing the way that he played yesterday. You can't get Jameis Winston to run the football that way. And if he threw the football that way, you stand and give him a round of applause. I got to give Taysom Hill love today, even more so than the Saints. Well, look, was. look, that's why I couldn't figure out why was Sean Payton lying to us, right, at the Super Bowl? What, what like, how does that help him to tell us he's going to, that, that, that Taysom Hill is the quarterback of the future when we started hearing, oh, yeah, they're going to start Jameis. And then I was like, oh, coach wasn't lying. And by the way, he seemed authentic to me. When he seemed honest to me when he told us he was going to start, that Taysom Hill was the quarterback of the future. Steve and I, I know he's 30, but that's because Drew Brees is 40. You know, he could have started with the team at 20. You're not going to replace Drew Brees while he's still good. So that's why he's so old and he's, you know, but he understands the offense well. He didn't make a lot, he didn't make mistakes, and especially at least turnovers. And especially what I liked was he got better in the second half. He was sort of game managing, feeling his way in the first half, didn't really feel like he. Second half, he was better. So that's all encouraging, and there's a lot to like and talk about about Taysom Hill. However, Taysom Hill did a nice job. And considering we don't think of him as a quarterback, he's thought of more before today as a, as a or yesterday as a gadget-type player, although at a very high level, that may be a bigger kind of story or what we remember. But in terms of who was more impressive yesterday, Stephen A. Smith. Them dudes sacked Matt Ryan eight times. They hit him another 11 times. That's almost a dozen. So, so basically, they got to the quarterback 20 times. If you want to give out grades, 
You, you give Taysom Hill a high grade on a curve based on circumstances. You give that defense an A plus for yesterday. They were excellent. All the defensive backs were excellent. And I know if your line is a mess and you're losing up front and they're getting pressure on the quarterback, it makes those defensive backs better. It goes hand in hand. Nevertheless, that was an excellent Saints defense yesterday. And in terms of the order in which you say the Saints won that game, why? The defense comes one, Taysom Hill comes two. Well, I understand where you're coming from, Max, but I'm just saying, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm indicting the, the Atlanta Falcons. You know that I officially believe they're the dumbest team in the NFL when you consider the fact that they treated an onside kick like it was a punt. Remember, against the Dallas Cowboys. I won't forgive them for that for years. We all know how I feel about them. But then when you couple that with the fact that you got a stud like Julio Jones, who's clearly, you know, suffering from his hamstring, and he was in and out all day long. Again, this kid Gage might be something special. I mean, he was targeted 12 times for a reason. I'm not trying to cast any aspersions on him whatsoever. I had one of my boys just text me talking about how the kid's out of LSU, and he's going to be a stud, and he can ball. I respect that. I'm not dismissing that by any stretch of the imagination. All I'm saying is, for this season, when you think about the Atlanta Falcons, you think about Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Todd Gurley, and this Atlanta Falcons offense. And bottom line is, from a running from a running perspective, they haven't been potent at all. Their passing attack has obviously been big time, but it hasn't helped offset losses because their defense stinks. And their coaching has stunk. Thank God Raheem Morris has them pointed in the right direction because Quinn definitely needed to go. In the end, they're just not a good team. They got too many problems. The offensive line is one of the biggest problems that they have, and we saw the results of that because Matt Ryan was suffocated and squashed all day long. That's the bottom line. It wasn't just because of New Orleans. It's because we knew before the game that their offensive line stunk. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.